Let me start by saying that I know the thought of kidney-friendly bacon is gonna be pretty controversial. You've probably been told on more than one occasion that bacon is terrible for you and you should avoid it at all costs. And I'm not gonna to try to argue that bacon is some nutrition all-star. It is not, far from it. However, if you have kidney disease and you love bacon, then gosh darn it, I wanna help you find a way to enjoy it sometimes. Just because you have kidney disease does not mean that you have to give up your favorite foods forever. Moderation, portion size, and balance are key though. You're probably not gonna be able to eat 10 slices of bacon in one sitting with no consequences, but we can definitely find a way to enjoy a slice or two without feeling guilty. Let's start by talking about why bacon is not particularly good for people with chronic kidney disease. First off, bacon contains phosphorus additives, which are bad for your cardiovascular system. And just as an aside, I have a free version of my CKD nutrition course that actually includes an entire video on phosphorus additives that is really excellent. And did I mention free? So definitely check the description of this video for a link to my course, and you should be able to scroll through and find the free version to check out. But back to bacon. Bacon contains phosphorus additives, and people with kidney disease are not able to get rid of extra phosphorus as well as people with healthy kidneys. So it's really, really important for people with kidney disease to limit or avoid phosphorus additives because these are more likely to drive up high phosphorus levels in your body and cause all kinds of problems like itching, your cardiovascular system, your bones, all kinds of things are harmed when your body has too much phosphorus. And when I did research through the USDA database for bacon, 73% of the results came up with phosphorus additives. 73%, that is a lot. So the first step to finding a kidney-friendly bacon is to find one that contains no phosphorus additives. And the only way to do that besides looking on my website to see the list of bacons that you can buy with no additives, is to read the ingredient list. If you have kidney disease, one of the best habits that you can get yourself into is reading the ingredient lists of foods you buy to see if they contain phosphorus. And here's an example of a bacon that contains phosphorus just so you can see how easy it is to spot. The next big reason that bacon is terrible for people with kidney disease, and really anyone, not just people with kidney disease, is the sodium. Bacon is very high in sodium. I always tell people to try and pick only foods that have more calories than sodium. A typical bacon easily can have five times the sodium than calories, making it a very high sodium food. I don't think that true low sodium bacon exists, and I say this as someone who has analyzed the entire USDA database, and I didn't come across a single bacon that contained less sodium than calories. And even if I did, let's be honest, it probably wouldn't taste that good. Um, the key to making bacon more kidney friendly with regards to sodium is to compare the nutrition facts and find the one with the least amount of sodium that also contains no phosphorus additives. Once you find that bacon, the next thing you have to do is keep your portion sizes modest. I firmly believe that you can fit any food into a CKD diet, but the key is gonna be portion size, moderation, and balance. For example, let's say that you found a lower sodium bacon with no phosphorus additives that contains 200 milligrams of sodium per 80 calorie serving, which is two slices. When I compare 200 to 80, I can see that this food has 120 more milligrams of sodium than calories. All you have to do to balance this out is to choose other foods during the day that have less sodium than calories. For example, if you eat an apple and some cashews later as a snack, that snack will have 255 calories and only 85 milligrams of sodium from the cashews. That's 170 milligrams less of sodium compared to the calories, and this is gonna offset that sodium from the bacon earlier. So this is what I mean when I say you need to balance out what you eat. If you wanna eat something that's a little bit saltier at one meal, then you need to balance it out with another meal or snack that has a lot less salt in it. Otherwise, you're gonna eat too much sodium, and too much sodium is gonna make your body retain fluid, and depending on where all that fluid decides to go, you could have trouble breathing, your feet could swell up and hurt, you might feel more tired than usual, your blood pressure could go up, all kinds of problems. So balance out your sodium for the day. 
Now, portion size and moderation are very closely related to balance because the bigger your portion size, the more difficult it will be to balance out the excess sodium. Let's now pretend that you wanna eat 10 pieces of lower sodium bacon. 10 pieces would have 1,000 milligrams of sodium. That's almost half your recommended sodium intake for the day. 1,000 milligrams of sodium and only 400 calories. That's 600 excess milligrams of sodium that you need to balance out in your day. My guess is that if you looked at the rest of your day and tried to cut out 600 milligrams of sodium, you'd probably decide that eating 10 slices of bacon isn't worth the trouble of cutting out all that sodium from your other meals. You're gonna be better off eating a smaller portion of bacon and savoring the taste. Or better yet, use bacon as an ingredient in a meal rather than eating it as is. Bacon is very flavorful and a little can go a long way. One of my favorite recipes that we eat several times a week in our house is our kidney-friendly Brussels sprouts with bacon recipe. The bacon is chopped up small and it's used more as a seasoning to add flavor to the Brussels sprouts without adding too much sodium or protein. Oh, and if we had done this example with 10 pieces of regular sodium bacon, can you guess how much excess sodium you'd be trying to cut? more than 3,000 excess milligrams of sodium. It would be literally impossible to shave enough sodium out of the rest of your day to stay under the recommended 2,300. Literally impossible. So definitely make sure that you are choosing a lower sodium bacon. Now, I mentioned protein a moment ago. If you have chronic kidney disease and are not on dialysis, then you need to keep in mind that bacon is considered a high protein food. The same concepts of portion size, moderation, and balance also apply to the protein in bacon. If you eat a lot of bacon in one sitting, it's gonna be really hard to balance out the high amount of protein throughout the rest of the day. I recommend using small portions of bacon to add flavor to dishes without adding a lot of protein. Now, what should you look for when shopping for bacon? The simplest thing would be to go to my website and check my bacon food guide for the bacons that I found that contain no phosphorus additives and are lower in sodium, and just look for one of those exact bacons. But failing that, here is what you should do. I mentioned before that you should check the ingredients for phosphorus additives. The majority of bacon is gonna contain a phosphorus additive, so you're really gonna have to hunt to find one without an additive. Generally speaking, uncured bacon is less likely to contain a phosphorus additive. So if you don't wanna waste a bunch of time looking at the ingredients of every single bacon you see, I would focus on checking just the ingredient lists of the bacons that say they're uncured. Uncured bacon contains no nitrites or nitrates, and that is beyond the scope of this discussion talking about that, but that's what it means when it says it's uncured. Uh, and up until recently, when I decided to do research on bacon for kidney disease, I don't think I'd ever eaten an uncured bacon before. Um, and I was genuinely curious whether it actually tastes different. So I bought a bunch of bacon, I cooked it up, and I forced my family to do a taste test. I had regular bacon with a lot of phosphates and sodium. I had an uncured bacon that was a bit high in sodium, but no phosphates. Uh, a cured bacon with no phosphates, and then a lower sodium cured bacon with no phosphates. And guess what? No one could tell the difference between cured bacon and uncured bacon. They look and tasted the exact same. And interestingly enough, my kids loved the lower sodium bacon, and we've actually completely switched over to only using lower sodium, no added phosphorus bacon now. Um, so don't assume that the lower sodium bacon is going to be awful. You may notice a difference, but I think you'll be surprised how quickly you get used to the lower sodium taste. So find a bacon with no phosphates. If you find more than one, Pick the one with the least amount of sodium and enjoy your bacon in moderation and be sure to balance it out with smart kidney choices elsewhere in your day. I've included a link to my kidney friendlier bacons in the description of this video. And if you wanna learn more about nutrition and kidney disease and how to choose foods that will help you feel your best and protect your kidneys, check out our affordable online CKD Diet Fundamentals course taught by yours truly. And if you like videos like this and you want me to make more, then let me know by liking this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel.